Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. So, how much longer are you going to live alone? So, well, if it was up to the wife, not for not for very long, but very short period of time. Like, here's the problem that we keep dealing with. Okay. Is she's giving me, she keeps giving me days of when they're going to come back. At, last week, it was that they were going to come back at the end of this week. Okay. And then it was, okay, maybe the weekend. And then yesterday it was, okay, we're going to come back probably on Wednesday of next week. And all of a sudden today it turned into Friday, maybe at the earliest. Friday next week? Friday of next week. So it keeps changing. Like every time we talk about it, she just, it's a different day of what it is. But I don't know any of these plans until like she talks to her family. And the the problem is she's dealing with is like she's there. Her and her sister drove out there together with our kids. And her sister wants to come back at the same time because her sister lives in the dc area too and it's about when can her parents come back because they're gonna you know help me child care and things like that still but it's it, so she can never come to grips with them because they don't really want to leave sister doesn't really want to dc at all because her sister is all freaked out about you know what's happening yeah you know out here granted and nothing special is happening yet we expect the surge soon but it's not like you know we're not seeing ridiculous increased cases as of this second to know that like there's a big you know, problem or anything, but so it keeps moving and moving and moving and moving, but it's getting me very frustrated. So she said yesterday, she was like, why don't you, uh, you know, come out, like take the day off of work tomorrow, which is like hard. I can't take the day off of work. Like it, we're preparing for surge. I got a lot of stuff to do, but yeah. oh, can you work from home or something tomorrow so that, you know, then you can just, you know, drive out on, on Thursday night. This is what she said last night at like 10 o'clock. And I was like entertaining it for a minute. And I was like, oh, I think, you know, maybe I can go out there because I do miss the family. I miss the kids. I want to see everybody. Right. But I'm like, you know, that's tomorrow. That's like literally, you know, I'm going to get up in the morning and eight hours from now and have to be packed up and ready to to go. But I still have to work some things out with work. I don't know if I can take Friday off. There's a lot of in-person things I have to do to make sure we're set up for the surge stuff. Like, I don't know. And then I was like, let me, you know, try to find out if we can if we can do this and I get up this morning and I go to work and I was like, I even packed a bag just in case. I was like, you know, the more I think about this, me going to Ohio for the weekend. So I come back on Sunday. So leave on like Thursday night or even Friday morning and come back on Sunday is super irresponsible because I know that I'm supposed to be on a stay at home order. So just leaving the state, just to leave the state for a couple of days to go see the family and come back violates the stay at home order. I'm also a high risk individual because I'm going to work at a hospital. I'm going to work at a, you know, at a fire department. Right. I am then going into a state that does not have a huge problem with things right now is like even though i'm gonna try to keep as minimal contact with any outside people that still seems like a really poor idea to me and then in theory when i come back at least maryland does so it would screw up the fire department though dc technically doesn't officially but maryland has an order where if you come in from outside of the of the dc area you're supposed to quarantine for 14 days before you're allowed in public really yeah Wow. So okay, it caused a problem with the fire department because there's a lot of people at the fire department who actually live in like New Jersey, Pennsylvania. I remember you Delaware. saying this, but I guess I yeah, forgot. So I would then have to quarantine for 14 days if I wanted to do things like by the book and officially. And if I'm not doing them by the book and officially, then I'm just as bad as all the other people who are right, right. going out and doing things. So I told her, I said, look, I said, for you know, thinking about this, I'd love to see you guys and all, but if you're coming back on Wednesday, because this is what I said today, so this is Thursday, so I think they're coming back next Wednesday, because that's what we talked about. And it's just not worth it for me to go out there. It's kind of defying orders. I should be setting an example. It's like irresponsible of me to do this. Mm-hmm. And her argument is that, well, I wouldn't be interacting with other people. I would only be going there to interact with them. I would places so i would basically be quarantined there and if i'm saying that i'm going to be quarantining from away from them then what's the point of them even coming home because if i'm just going to quarantine from the family they should just not even come home at all because i'm going to quarantine it's like i'm not going to quarantine from you guys 
But your parents, maybe. Your parents are like one of those you know, high risk groups that, you know, they right. didn't want to be with me anyway. And for one, we're going to go into a, a small house that's going to house, you know, eight people at this point because, you know, that's where you want me to go to see the kids again. So she got very, very, very upset and very frustrated at me and trying to argue with me on why I should be going there and how it wasn't. I, I wouldn't be doing anything wrong by going. To... <sighs> and I disagree with that fundamentally and yeah. can't get her. And I think she, under, and I, I think what it is, and I don't want to paint her as, as a bad person. I think what's happening is she's getting extremely frustrated because she's basically back living with her parents, yeah. quote unquote, with two and kids. her parents, her parents are with two kids and her parents are treating her like she's still living there. It's yeah. like, she feels like she's grounded all the time because she can't go out of the house. You know, right. it's, I think the frustration is just mounting so much with her that she wants to have something like back to normalcy of her, her life. So I, it's not that she's a bad person. It's just that she's very, very, very frustrated with the situation right now. Right. But she still didn't, doesn't like, she still thinks that I'm wrong. Well, I, everything I've learned about from the time I've spent watching you and your wife argue is I don't think you've ever been right. So, <laughs> well, that's hey, anytime we argue about something, it's like clearly one of us, one of us, we, we all think the other one is wrong. It's you, right? Uh, yeah, so yes, every yeah. time you've seen us argue, she's never thought I was right because that's why we argue. Because, she, yeah, she's like, but oh, I guess okay. you know, normally, whatever I would argue with like Crystal about something, we would come to a, an agreement I mean, in, in the end, like there would we would come to terms and someone would someone would be. Right, or at someone, least someone would concede at some point. Basically, yeah, yeah. Like someone would be like, you know what? Oh, you know what? I guess you got a point. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, versus, no, we don't have. Yeah, we don't have that as much. Yeah, <laughs> it's usually just a frustrated, and that's how, of course, this one ended, like via text. Right, we've talked since then. Like we're 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 fine. You can still tell she's frustrated, but right. yes, it, it always ended with basically, uh, fine. I'm not going to talk about this right now. You know, <laughs> not responding to messages anymore. Yeah, but I think that's the, the frustration coming out though of the whole situation. Well, um, so you know. I, I am very upset with people not following these sort of things. And, like, you know, I was talking to you about this off camera, the, the girl I was dating. And her, her opinion of things is that, uh, you know, she can go hang out with her friends because that's all she's doing. And it's okay because she's only going to those houses and those people aren't really following quarantine anyways. Um, so she's not a risk to them because they're already not doing the things that they should be doing, but that just only made me more angry because it was like, well, if they're not doing the things that they need to be doing, that means that you're likely to catch the shit from them. And when I brought that up, her response to that was, well, yeah, but I'm only going to their house. And I'm like, so you don't go to the grocery store. You don't go anywhere else. You don't go to get takeout. You don't do anything. Like, well, yeah. I'm like, okay, well then you're fucking selfish and childish. Well, and so, and that's, and my whole point is, even if I feel down deep in my heart that I would do things as minimally impactful as possible, mm -hmm. minimally impactful is still impactful. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. if all of a sudden I go to Ohio and Ohio has a, a random surge in cases, whether it's it has anything to do with me or not, I'm going to ultimately feel responsible and like I fucked up. And if somebody looked at the situation and looked at what they did, they would tell me what an irresponsible piece of shit I was. Yeah, absolutely. And as much as I want to see my family, so and I, I will be absolutely honest. If they, if I was not seeing them again for the next like month and knew this, I would probably go because I need to see my family. I miss my family. Knowing they're coming back next week, and granted, it got pushed back to Friday instead of to Wednesday. And I keep trying to tell her like. Why are you listening to like what your parents and your sister are saying about this? Well, my sister doesn't want to come back until Friday. Like, that's what I agreed to with her. Tell her she rode in your fucking car. If she wants to come back on Friday. She can get on a plane. Planes are still flying. If that's when she <laughs> wants to come back, she can come back on Friday. You can come back on Tuesday or Wednesday. Like, I don't understand the problem. Like, yeah. she doesn't want to come back. She doesn't want to drive seven hours with two kids in the car. And I said, look, you want me to drive 14 hours round trip? To come see you for two days doing something I feel is completely irresponsible of me to do. If you really are that upset and need to see me, 
get the kids in the car for seven hours, come back here, and then just be here. Like, it's yeah. going to suck for seven hours in the car, but then just fucking be here. I mean, she's got to like, do that at some point anyways, right? Right. And that's why I told her, you're going to have to do that anyways. Like, so why add me doing something I don't feel comfortable doing into the middle of it? Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right in this case. Um, well, and I, and one of the reasons I actually didn't want to talk to you about it at first in the, the first video that we did is because I knew exactly how you this and i don't want to sit there and have just a you know like confirmation jerk. bias yeah I'm absolutely correct because you know good said so because i knew what you were gonna say right um and maybe now it's been a couple extra days because it was the second video we're recording tonight that there'll be some different comments and different thought processes and stuff so i'm curious to see what the comments are saying now because who knows what's gonna happen i honestly dc was supposed to start surging as of the 15th when i looked originally with yeah. like all these missing beds and you know i looked today it said something like the surge started today and we're not projected to lose any beds. Huh. But the hospital keeps talking about the fact that the surge is now going to be somewhere between April and May. Like now we're looking at week. I don't think anybody has any idea what's going to happen. Well, no, that's basically what they've said with all these models that were predicting these things is like they don't they don't have enough information to actually be predicting anything. Um, and this is all based on like, you know, there's too many variables in this to make a, a rational equation because like who is staying home who's not staying home like you know and how how are they affecting those around them and that sort of thing that's that's all the things we can't know like how how much are people actually doing the right thing like people like me and you who actually give a shit um, not to say that your wife doesn't but there are people out there that really don't that are just doing their normal day-to-day -day shit um, you see videos of them all over the internet and they're just doing Everything just like nothing is happening. And those are the people that are going to kill people um, because they're just being reckless. Um, and uh, those are the people that you can't make a model based on, really. Right. What I do find super off the wall is I keep doing all this stuff. At, like one of my biggest jobs I've been doing this week is we're doing surge planning. And it's the planning for the, the massive influx of patients. Uh -huh. So the hospital's got a plan. Like, these are all the areas we're going to convert into ICUs if we start getting a surge and we need to do this. I have a very big part of what I have to do because I have to make all the, uh, the electronic health record pieces work with, uh, you know, with an area that's not meant to really hold patients and this and that. So it's a really big job that has a lot of coordination and stuff going on. Uh -huh. And there's a lot more things to it, like with getting people provisioned to be able to access the system if we surge people from all these different areas. So there's a lot of moving parts. And I keep having all these meetings with all these system level people and we will explain the problem. They will completely be on board. And, oh, yeah, we understand that the uh, the time we're in right now in this nation, it's an emergency, national emergency. We know we've got to, you know, tweak things and not do things. We can't necessarily take the whole like multiple weeks for approvals and things that normally happen. Let's get this stuff done. So we're making all these like major decisions for surge planning. And like today, we finally got to the bottom of one that we had to jump through a lot of hoops for. And somebody was like, OK, so we're going to have all this stuff done for you guys by like Tuesday of next week. That's when we're going to get it done. It's going to be good. And we're like, OK, good. That's like when they predicted the surge happens. Uh, but if that's the earliest we can get, that's the earliest we can get. You know, it's right there. And then somebody else is like, no, 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 no. Hold on. Let's hold off a little bit. I'd rather we don't do it until Friday because I want to make sure the staff is like prepared. <laughs> and we're having to like go back and to these people and be like, look, we've had meetings every day this week about this topic because this is fucking surge planning. We don't know when the surge is going to happen, but don't just push it back arbitrarily because the surge is supposed to happen prior to the date that you just gave us. Right. This is planning for that surge. You have to be ready before that surge is expected. Like you're not an idiot. You have all the models. You're in all the meetings that people talk about when they expect the surge to start. Don't put deadlines after that fucking date. What is wrong with you? Like, I, I, I don't understand what people are thinking. They're almost like, they're almost like we're bending over backwards to help you. We'll be done by three days after you need this by. That's that's really it doesn't make any sense whenever, like you said, they have all the data like, yeah, I mean, they're, what they're data there the is again, meetings. like who knows they're, how good. These well, and are. these people are like system level leaders who have been doing that. We, we all sit on the same every day about preparing for the surge and doing everything possible to get there. And then when you get in the little subgroup of the people who can actually make this one happen, they're just like, yeah, by, by Friday. Well, no, the surge is supposed to start fucking Tuesday. You need to have this done by Tuesday. I don't know what what you didn't understand about that.
The title of this meeting is called Surge Planning. <laughs> it's uh, so how bad is it in your hospital right now? Like no, it's, still... it's not. It's not actually, and I think that's why I I really do think that's why that's given some people a false sense of security. Granted, these are more system level people that don't sit in the hospital, but the hospital censuses are not up right now. Uh-huh. So if the surge really does come on Tuesday, that means we're going to have a f- fucking hell of a weekend. But I I really think it's getting pushed back. I think we're doing enough that's flattening the curve that's either going to push it back or we are actually going to kind of control it for now. What we'll find out, I don't think the surge is going to happen as early next week as we originally predicted. I mean, that's good. Like, And and that's what's kind of scary about all of this to me is if we do the right stuff, nothing bad happens, but it also makes people think nothing bad was ever going to happen, especially for those that didn't do the right thing and continued to <laughs> go out and about. It's kind of like Y2K. Right. How much talk was there about Y2K and the destruction of the world? And Y2K came and went and nothing happened. And a lot of people think it's because nothing was ever wrong. It probably had a lot to do with all those companies that did all that time to fix all that shit, you know, beforehand. But there was also probably a big scary component of it is that there was just uncertainty as to what the systems were going to do when faced with that scenario. Right. Right. Yeah, there, there was a lot of unknowns, but then there was a lot of prep work that went into making sure that systems were upgraded to handle the, the date change. So. Yeah, can you imagine if you were a company hired to fix software bugs for Y2K and you were like, okay, based on the uh, specs, I will have this work delivered to you in 2003. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Like, <laughs> that's like what, what I'm dealing with, with, the, with right. these people. Like, and I don't even get it. And thank God I have somebody at the system level who, like, she texted me after I got, because we got off this meeting and I thought things were, like, great. And I went, this meeting is why I was at work late today. And uh, this is a, a phone meeting, too. I could have taken it from home, but I was just still there. So I took it there. And I get home from work thinking, okay, we got a plan. Everything's good. And She's texting me and she goes, so when do you need this by exactly? And I was like, well, what do you mean? I need it by when the surge starts. You know that. And she goes, so is Friday too late? And I was like, well, yeah, probably. She's like, <laughs> your email and jump in on the response with me. And it's because like she had seen an email of them going back and forth and saying Friday. And she was like, I don't think Friday is going to work. <laughs> you know, we kind of need this. That's as soon so as possible. crazy to me. And it's... It, and I, I don't know. And it's funny because I've been on a lot of meetings with a lot of much higher level executives than myself at the system level. But I have a strong enough voice that I'm leading a lot of these charges for our system. Uh-huh. So I get put on these meetings and people I've had meetings with before. But it's like literally like me, this one person at the system that I work with. And then like these high level executives. And it's kind of like going head to head with people that are way off of your pay scale. And telling them, like, no, you're, you're wrong. Like, you, you can't, you're sitting here and acting like you're doing me a favor because you're like high up there, but this is not a favor. You need to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just so weird. It's your I don't, job. I don't, yeah, exactly. It's, it's your job. Like, I, I, if it wasn't me, it's going to be the next person, like my boss. If, if you don't listen to me, my boss is going to get involved. Granted, uh, my boss, I love my boss to death at the system level, but she does not have as strong of a backbone as she needs. She does not push for the things that she needs to push for in a lot of ways. That's actually why I become the voice in a lot of this stuff. <laughs> I see. Um, you know, we've been doing these UHCs the last uh, this whole week. You know, this week was supposed to be the week we I would have been in Florida. I guess I was gonna say we, but I guess you weren't. You weren't gonna make it this year. Um, but we did these UHCs for the charity, and uh, people can donate the 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 tridents with loyalty on them. Uh-huh. And so I've got to play with the trident quite a bit. And uh, you're not really missing out on not having one of them. Oh, is it not that good? It's not great at all, really. Wait, so... But, uh, um, Breon loves it. I mean, there's some... I mean, I think he loves it just because it's different and they're hard to get. So he, like... Breon's kind of guy likes to show off. Like, if he was... If he played World of Warcraft, he'd have been the guy sitting in town on the expensive mount. And, like, look at this horse. Look at my horse. <laughs> horse is amazing. Um... So, uh, he pays I think, his monthly subscription to log in for eight hours a day yeah. in the same spot. <laughs> right? There are people that did that. I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't think you ever played WoW. No, I, I never played. I was so afraid I was going to. 
to it that I never I've never played it. That's that is a big part of the game though. Is once I mean I was guilty of this. Once you know you get like realm first on this boss, it drops a mount. There's only one on the server, no one else can get it. You know the you know we've trained for a month to beat this boss, and like this literally happened. Like after a month of wiping on this boss, we finally beat the last boss in the last expansion that I played, and. Uh, the, the mount is a guaranteed drop. It drops. We all roll for it. I win the win the roll with 100, actually. I won, you know, 100 out of 100. And uh, first thing I did was go and go to town and just sit on it. Let people <laughs> look at me. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of online community games. There's been a very small handful I've ever played. My one buddy was super into Guild Wars. And uh, I know uh, Wes was into Guild Wars. Yeah, I was about to say Wes would get all of us to play Guild Wars. Wars. Um, but so I bought a Guild Wars account because at this, for some reason at the time, I, I guess I still am in general against, I hate monthly subscription fees to things. Yeah. I and agree. this was back when like World of Warcraft was one of the few monthly subscription fees. Everything else was you buy a game and you have the game. Right. Um, now it's a whole different model, like an whole different system. But I was like, you know what? I can deal with buying Guild Wars or Guild Wars 2. Maybe it was, I don't even know which one. I can buy it because then I have it forever and it's online and I'm going to get really into Guild Wars and like really love playing it. And I just never did. I, I like turned it on like twice and never like turned it on again. But he used to tell me and he used to try to do this stuff too. There was a starting area where I guess you could only get up to like level what, like five or some low level before uh-huh. you went out of the starting area and went into a new world and you can never come back to the starting area again. And there was these people that found out that you could let certain animals kill you and the animals would gain experience from killing you as well. Like the NPCs basically in the game, but they weren't like, you know, so you could like level those friendly. NPCs up and get higher. Than level if five. you, st- if you stood by like a, a, like a cool thing, I don't know call what re- resurrection something or other and it was still so it stayed like loaded it would kill you over and over again you would just like afk for like 10 hours and it would kill you enough times to have a high enough level that when you killed it you got enough experience to get more than you were supposed to and there were people that made their like living in guild wars just getting up to the maximum level of a normal character in that beginning game and staying there forever wow and i'm just like I granted you could play multiple characters. They had other characters they did other things with, but I'm just like, I, I don't like. That's the ultimate. I'm just showing off. Yeah, no, that you could ever possibly do. There was a thing in Warcraft called twinking, which twink is a different term, <laughs> but uh, different meaning. But you know, um, where you would you would the there was battleground set up and they were level based. So like. If you got to level 20, you moved on to a new battleground. So you only played with characters from like level whatever to 19. I don't know where the, the bottom is. But so the, the the level 19 twinks were like the the main ones that people got really into. And back in the day in Warcraft, you couldn't cut off experience gain. So if you killed something, you got experience for it, you gained levels. And they eventually made it where you could turn it off where your character wouldn't gain experience. But there was this whole metagame of how to perfectly gear out like a level 19 rogue to be perfect at battlegrounds. And I even got into this for a while. Um, where you like so that you wouldn't be a 20, though? Yeah, like, yeah, so so you, yeah you did get like the perfect gear for level 19 to do these battlegrounds without, without accidentally going over to level 20 um, and not being able to, uh, to play anymore, basically. I didn't realize these guys spawned during the day. I guess it's I didn't dark either. enough in like, the. Yeah, I just, I just saw them down there. Oh, there's a couple. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just some of the some of the meta game. It's so and, and I understand why people do it. I've done stupid things like that, but I just can't think of one that I never played in a big online community. And there's not much you can do in, right? You know, in my like, even if you did some random thing in Minecraft, people wouldn't know. Like yeah. I could go get on a server and make my goal to never get an achievement. There would right. be a lot of things you have to not do to never get a single achievement on a server, but you could do it. But who would know? Right. I mean, like, if you weren't making YouTube videos, then no one, basically. Like, right, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, guys, I only have two deaths on the server. Lowest number on the server. That's true. That's very true. Um, yeah, I mean, those kind of bragging rights. And, you know, when I went back to play World of Warcraft a second time, after having great success with it the first time... I was kind of bored with it, and I think it was a lack of attention. 
actually. <laughs> like I'd gotten used to like being. Well, like, yeah, you were used to being the high class. Right. High, yeah, like, it was popular high. I, everyone knew who I was. You know, I used I used to play. Um, uh, uh, it's not, Jesus Christ, I don't even remember. It was Counter Strike. Because I was going to say CSGO, but it wasn't CSGO. It was Counter Strike Source. Uh huh. You know, before CSGO came out, I used to play on all these like jail uh, servers and all these uh, zombie servers and things like that. And it didn't start getting fun until people started to recognize you. Yeah. Oh, I played with this guy before for like this stupid thing or this fun thing, or he's always the one cracking jokes about this, you know, type right. of deal. that's when it got way more fun is when you had that personality that people yeah. knew and gravitated toward. I, mean, I think that's what made this work for me too, was like doing the YouTube videos. So like, I'm not just playing this game. Like there's people looking at it and, uh, yeah. Know. Oh, yeah. I got. I tried to get into Minecraft twice before I started making YouTube videos because it was just, it was like Tiger King. It was everybody was talking about it. <laughs> Nobody could shut the fuck up about Minecraft. This is back before it was like a kids game. Like this was. I'm talking. You know. Yeah. People in their twenties were the people who were like raging about Minecraft at the time. Right. And I I played it and got into it like slightly for like a day or two, and then was like, I'm bored with this game. I can't do anything with it anymore. And the making videos on it was making it made it fun again because I wasn't doing it for me. I was doing it for right, you know, other people to watch and enjoy and like get that. You know, sure, I was getting attention from that, but it wasn't all about the attention at first. It was just yeah. about doing something that other people were watching, and it made me feel fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I totally understand exactly all of that, hundred percent. Uh, and with that, I guess we uh, we've we filled another one more episode down. We have one more episode down, and a couple more days of Corona to go. I'm calling it. It's, <laughs> just, it's it. Just it's come. done. I mean, you know, f- federal funding stops for testing uh, tomorrow. So yeah, cur- curve going to be low, super low. Be, yeah, no, you don't have to worry about a surge. Actually, yeah, surge surge done. All these random patients here for like flu like symptoms, not Corona. Yeah, come on. flu like symptoms. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, guys. We'll see you.